Back around 1995 on a gig, I took a peek at the front of house engineer's setup. In the rack was a single space eight channel compressor limiter gate. It was the first time I had seen a DCP-8, and it was the first time I had heard the name Presonus. Since then, product development has not stopped. In fact, it continues to be groundbreaking. Hi, I'm John Tendy. Thank you for watching. In 2017, we saw the release of the Studio Live Series 3 digital mixing console with scene recall, a touchscreen, and DAW mode. This year, as promised, Personas released the Earmix 16M personal monitoring system, the NSB 8x8 and 16x8 stage boxes, Studio Live 16R, 24R, and 32R rack versions of their Series 3 mixers. Everything in the new lineup works together as one ecosystem, communicating over an AVB network that can be controlled from your Mac, your PC, or from the Series 3 via the SW5E AVB switch. And while all of these units were designed with the Series 3 in mind, this is not necessarily a proprietary setup. Now there's a lot of information here and this video will serve as more of an AVB overview and I'll save the more product specific topics for upcoming videos. AVB or audio video bridging was made available about 2011, at least that's when I first heard the term. And while it has been used in various types of digital media networks, we really hadn't seen it used in audio systems as much as we saw it used in video systems, security systems, and AVB is quite common in automotive electronics. And while there are many commonly used protocols in a modern digital audio system, for example, Huey comes to mind, um, ADAT protocol, uh, many audio developers still rely on some kind of proprietary network protocol at one stage or another, which limits and sometimes prevents incorporating third-party hardware. Uh, however, the Persona Series 3 mixing console, also the rack versions, ear mix, the stage boxes, SW5E, are all AVDEC compliant. And Personas is a member of the AVNU Alliance, which is a community creating an interoperable ecosystem using open standards through certification. Furthermore, Personas is developing firmware that will work with the Milan protocol, which assures interoperability between compliant devices at new and higher levels of convenience, reliability, and functionality. So what does that mean to us? Well, while nothing is truly future-proof, AVDEC compliant devices just might be. For more information, go to avnu.org. Okay, so back to AVB in our world. The big benefit of AVB and networked audio is accurate sync, low latency, less expensive wiring, the multi-channel snake, and it's a much cleaner digital signal from point to point. Let's consider a headphone monitoring system. To stay non-proprietary, old school, let's go back about eight years. It's not a long time ago. You needed copper wire, lots of it. Audio systems were one way. That is, one copper wire sends a signal from point to point. Multiple signals required multiple wires from multiple points to multiple points. And with multiple audio units in a daisy chain, you're managing hundreds, maybe thousands of feet of wire around the studio or stage. One way. Then, some of that audio has to come back. In a studio setting, it's somewhat manageable. The length is short compared to a live rig. And in a studio, once it's set up, it stays there sometimes for years. But in a live situation, setup and breakdown is a daily thing. Now, early Ethernet systems such as Aviom emerged, which used the ANET proprietary protocol. But the convenience of Cat5 cable was clear. It was cheaper, it was lighter, and it was a much easier setup and breakdown, certainly much less time to set up and breakdown. But many of us, myself included, considered it live and not studio quality audio. Well, it didn't take long for me to realize that digital audio through Cat5e or through CAT6 is actually cleaner, it's faster, it's wildly cheaper, and it's more reliable than copper wire. Consider this, my old headphone system a few years back, you might have seen the video, it had a daisy chain of Mackie mixers, 16 channel mixers. I had six of those. So you had 16 XLRs going to 16 XLRs with a mult out at each connector in order to daisy chain to the next mixer. So let's do the math. Starting from the mixer end, and at the time it was my Control 24, the Edsel of mixing consoles. 16 uh, times seven, if you're gonna factor in the mixer as well, that's 112 XLRs. Three solder points on each, that's 366 solder points. Factor in the patch bay, 16 to 16 times three solder points, plus another 16 more for normaling, you're adding another 80 solder points. So you have a session that's just about to start. There's a buzz in the line, of course. Troubleshooting is 20 minutes. 
get the soldering gun, there's 10 more minutes. And your day is delayed by, let's say, best case scenario, 30 minutes. It doesn't seem like a lot, but when you charge by the hour, 30 minutes can cost you 25, 30, maybe $50. Not to mention the size and scowls from the person with the checkbook. And it's not like this happens only once a year. It was always happening at the worst time. So reliability was always questionable. Now, let's apply the same situation to an AVB rig with a daisy chain of six Earmix 16Ms. For some reason, the drummer hears a buzz. It happened to me a few weeks ago. But you already know it's not the headphone system because once it leaves the mixer, it's a digital chain. So in my case, that means there are 448 less connections I had to worry about, which is especially great for me because every time I'd fix one connection in the patch bay, I'd break the one right next to it. So in an AVB setup, we immediately know that the buzz is likely a mic wire. In my case, it turned out to be an empty channel that was turned up and the preamp was cranked, so there was a hiss coming into the headphone line. Problem solved, 20 seconds. Let's factor in economics. Here's the NSB 8x8 stage box. A good place for this might be in your drum room. $599 from B&H. Sounds expensive? Well, consider this. Each input is a digitally controlled analog preamp. It's not a patch point. So the analog path ends at the connection to the box. The NSB 8x8 also has eight monitor outs. Now on a stage, the benefits to that is clear. Connect to your Series 3 with a Cat6 cable, 50 feet, 17 bucks. 100 feet, about 25 bucks. Here's a Proco 8-channel stage box, 50 feet of snake, $217. If you want more than 8 channels, more than 50 feet for a drum room, you probably do. Here's a Whirlwind 16-channel, 200-footer with four returns, $1,000. And by the way, that weighs about 50 pounds. Now in my drum room, instead of an NSB 16x8, I have a Studio Live 16R, which doubles as a stage box. And I can take it with me if I have a small mobile gig with limited space. Also, I can send the drummer a headphone mix from the 16R if I'm short on ear mix units. Now, if you're not mobile and the drum booth is eight feet away, then yeah, I'd probably go with an analog stage box, 15 feet of snake, and if it has a TRS return, you could probably send a headphone mix through that. You won't have some of the options, but if it's in a permanent studio setting, yeah, I would probably do that first. But an old analog mixer for a headphone mix is a disaster. I'd never go back to that. And finally is the Presonus SW5E AVB switch, which switches audio paths to their proper place. Multiple devices can be daisy chained off one connection, up to seven. Latency is two milliseconds, and maximum length of CAT6 cable is 100 meters or 328 feet. Now that's unit to unit, not total. So let's say you have three ear mixes in a chain. That's a run of almost 1,000 feet with no problems. Seven in the chain, 2,300 feet. Uh, different units can be mixed in a chain in any order. There are third-party AVB switches that are AVDEC compliant and will work in a Personas AVB rig. And more and more are popping up every day. At the moment, the Motu switch, Extreme Networks, and PackEdge have been tested in-house at Personas. Additionally, switches by Cisco and Luminex have recently been AVNU certified and will likely work just fine with Personas AVB products. They just haven't been officially tested in-house by Personas yet. And more economics and another AVB Plus, digital patching. I don't need a patch bay anymore. I had three Switchcraft TT bays, they're gone. The connection permutations are seemingly infinite and I'm still learning things every day. And I know I'm barely scratching the surface with this video, so I'll add more videos that are product specific over the next month or two as I grow with this system. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe because there's much more to come. And please follow and like Tendi Media on Facebook. I'm John Tendi. Thank you for watching.